Okay, uh, this is uh, Matthew Robert Payne from Australia. This prophetic protocol in church. Uh, this is chapter 21. All can prophesy, only three should is the title of this one. This is based on, uh, I skipped uh, uh, chapter 30, uh, verse 30, because I'm not really sure what it's saying. Um, so, um, so I've gone on to verse 31. I'd rather tell you that I'm not really sure what it's saying than uh, try and tell you a meaning I don't understand. Verse 31 says, For you all can prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be encouraged. Okay, now, Paul says, let two people speak or three people speak in prophecy. So he's not going against his word saying, for you all can prophesy one by one, that they all may learn and may be encouraged. Uh, the time for everyone in a meeting prophesying would be a convention or a training session in prophecy and everyone get a go on the microphone to prophesy. But that's not a public meeting. In a public meeting, two to three people can speak in tongues and be uh, 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 interpreted and two to three people prophesy. So, um, the Apostle Paul is saying, let all people, for you can all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and be encouraged. The gift of prophecy is a very open gift. Many Christians can walk in the gift of prophecy. God has got the gift of prophecy available to most spirit-filled Christians, and even Christians that aren't spirit-filled can walk in prophecy, and it's a very good gift. What Paul is saying here is, uh, let people have a go. Let people test their gift and let them learn to prophesy and let them be encouraged. Um, uh, that all may learn. Do we learn? We learn things when someone gives a prophetic word. But um, I think Paul is saying here that uh, the people prophesying will learn from their experience in the prophetic gifting. And uh, uh, all may be encouraged means that the congregation will be encouraged. Certainly they always are with proper protocol and proper prophecy. And if the prophecy is being judged and only the good being kept, then everyone's going to be encouraged. But on both instances here, I think uh, he's talking about the people who are prophesying that the people who are prophesying that all may learn, that the, the new emerging prophets may learn to walk in their gift and m that they all who walk in the gift of prophecy may all be encouraged in their gift to move in their gift. There's nothing like uh, bringing a prophetic word to the church and having two or three people come and give you feedback. It's very encouraging for your gift. It can be disconcerting to prophesy in a church and have no feedback coming back to you. It's not the reason you prophesy. You prophesy because the Lord gives you a message. But um, it's certainly disconcerting to uh, have no feedback for six months. And uh, you, um, you wonder if the people are actually even listening to what God is saying. So... Um, uh, some people read this that for all can prophesy one by one they have a rendering of this scripture meaning that everyone can prophesy uh, in the church uh, everyone can prophesy everyone's got the gift of prophecy uh, this is not true because um, he says here uh, in verse 5 I wish you all spoke in tongues but even more that you prophesy it, if, if everyone already could prophesy, Paul wouldn't say, I wish you could all speak in tongues and even more that you prophesy. He wouldn't be wishing that more people would prophesy if they already could prophesy. So I've had someone in a Pentecostal church tell me that everyone can prophesy and he quoted the scripture and he quoted it out of context. He wasn't happy with how I put it in context and said that that's what he's actually saying and that's what it means in context and I'm not sure he received what I had to say but um, that's what uh, I had to say if everyone could prophesy well then um, 
uh, Paul wouldn't be wishing that more people would prophesy than speak in tongues. He actually says that not everyone can speak in tongues in the Corinthian church. So um, it's not so bad to be in a Pentecostal church and not speak in tongues because they existed in Corinth and they can exist in your church. So nothing to feel bad about. Um, certainly with this message, you wouldn't be feeling bad. You probably wouldn't want to speak in tongues now after I finished uh, uh, because uh, Paul's been pretty hard on the gift of tongues through this series. But uh, as I said, and I underline a bold letter, Paul spoke in tongues more than any person. So he's not bashing tongues. He's just getting the proper protocol into action. So um, uh, a, a good growing church will allow uh, people to prophesy in order and uh, and work their way around the church so, so that the same people aren't speaking up all the time. Um, um, so, um, verse 30 says, If anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. Um, I understand the context now. If uh, you've got a word uh, that you're going to share and then someone shares the word and shares the word that you are going to share you're to keep silent yeah so that would be proper pro prophetic protocol if you had an ego uh, you'd probably repeat the same sort of word and uh, Paul is saying that's not proper protocol you're repeating what God had to say so if God wants to say a message to a church and a newbie someone new to prophecy gets up and shares the word that was on your heart, you were only there as a reserve. Prophesying in a church, it can be a very daunting task. It's very scary to open your mouth and speak prophetically over a church. It's been very scary. So God could often place a word on a newbie, on a new person's uh, lips, and, uh, and the person just not go ahead, not have the courage to prophesy. Then you as a seasoned prophet should speak the prophetic word that's been placed in your heart. But if you're sitting there and someone prophesies the word that God has given you, you ought to keep silent and not to take up one of the two to three turns that have been allotted to each meeting by God. You understand? I understand now. See, I didn't understand if you're following this series, this is uh, uh, an example of revelation. Uh, what I was explaining of revelation of a scripture I didn't have revelation of that scripture when I went on to um, uh, to um, uh, start this uh, part. But during this part, as I explained this part, I understood uh, what the verse before meant. So that's an example of the Holy Spirit giving me revelation. And uh, I couldn't be talked out of what uh, I've shared there. Uh, I think I'll listen to this whole series just for my own edification to say really it's amazing you knew all that and it is amazing that's what revelation is and teaching is a wonderful gift because as you teach you learn and teach yourself uh, so i think i've covered those verses and we'll move on to the next one